Hi everybody, how's everybody doing tonight? So we just gonna wait another minute or two. We'll see if anybody other late stragglers coming in. So, but everyone's here today because we're talking about balance. We're talking about fall prevention. Um, but this is not a lecture. This is lectures are boring. Lectures people fall asleep. Uh, this is a discussion. This is a uh, open forum. So if anyone has any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, uh, scream them out, and we'll uh, we'll make it work. But. I see a lot of familiar faces here. Thank you for coming out and supporting me speaking for my familiar faces. For those of you that I don't know, my name is Jared Caspi. I am a physical therapist with Head Over Heels Physical Therapy. Uh, we are located right here in the Y, right next door. So we have neighbors to the Y. We rent space on the second floor. Um, October, we will have been there for two years, which is crazy because uh, you know I still feel like I'm a newlywed. And I still feel like I'm new at this whole owning a practice type of thing, but so thankfully so far so good. So I'm sure everybody here is familiar with the Y. I know a lot of people in this room right now go to the Y on a regular basis. So good stuff there. Um, a lot of what we do, and with the Y, we have a very large senior population. Uh, looking around here, thankfully everyone in this room is not a senior, so that's a good thing. So, um, but in a few more years, when we get a little bit older, some of the tricks that I'm going to teach you today, we can hopefully apply. So we're here to talk about balance and fall prevention. So just by a show of hands, who here in this room has ever fallen in their life? Okay. Has anybody here never fallen in their life? Really? Now, when we say life, we go zero to today. Oh, you talk about whole life. So falling is one of the things that happens. For those of you that have grandkids and kids, they're the last ones that you remember starting walking. So when these little kids start walking, what do they do? They fall. So me as a physical therapist that works with adults and children, with a lot of the children that we work with, the first thing that we have to teach them, okay, it's very easy to teach a kid how to walk, but you gotta teach them how to fall. Who here walks with their hands in their pocket? Anybody? Okay, so for my people that walk with their hands in the pocket, do you guys have grandkids? Do you remember when they started walking recently, somewhat recently? Um, when a child starts walking, what they do is they walk like this. And then as they get more comfortable, the hands come down here, and then as they get older, then eventually the hands come down here. Well, the reason why their hands are up here is because if they're going to fall, what's going to break their fall? Their hands. Nobody taught them that. It's something that's done from within. It's, it comes back from when we were all monkeys millions and millions of years ago. Uh, granted, monkeys have nice longer arms, so it protects us a little bit more, but um, that's why they do it. So walking and having your hands in the pocket, if we were to fall, What's going to take the brunt of our fall? Our face if we fall forward. If we fall back, back of our head. And granted, cosmetically, a fall forward is a lot less pretty. But if we fall backwards, that could be a lot worse. Regardless, we want our hands to be able to stabilize our fall. So that's the first trick to make your balance better. Hands out of the pockets. Now, for my ladies, well, how many times are we walking and we're going through our purse looking for something? Well, when we walk, our arms, they stabilize us. We swing our arms. I'm exaggerating the swing right now. But normally we swing our arms. And what happens, it doesn't happen, it's not a coincidence that when my right leg goes forward, my left arm goes forward. Um, or else we'll be walking like a, uh, a soldier. Um, but the reason why our arms swing is because they help counterbalance us. So every time one leg is coming forward, I'm balancing on one leg, but the other arm is there to stabilize me. So think about walking and holding something. Think about walking and fumbling through our purse or walking and even being on the cell phone. Now obviously it's real life. So to tell everybody to constantly walk, you know, never reach for your keys out of your pocket or never reach for your phone that's ringing in your pocketbook as you're walking, it's not realistic. But it's something that we should keep in the back of our head. So, basically, we're here to talk about balance. So, like I said, this isn't a lecture, it's a discussion. And 
and it's an interactive discussion. So what I always like to do first is start my, uh, my talks with something active. I'm a physical therapist, it's all about getting physical. So I want everybody to put their folder on the floor or the chair next to them or something like that. If you're holding anything, put it on the floor also. If you don't feel like moving, that's okay too. You can stay where you are. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my trusty timer on my phone. And the first test that we're going to do is, where is my timer? Okay. So everybody's sitting in a chair right now. Uh, just grab this chair over here. So when I say go, everybody's going to go from sitting in their chair. I'll come up on stage so everybody can see me. So we're going to go from sitting in our chair to standing up. So we have to go completely down and completely up. And there's no arm rest, so obviously can't use your arms anyhow. And we're going to see how many times we can do this in 30 seconds. The only thing that each of you have to, has to do is remember how many you did. Simple enough? All right. Ready, set, go. For those of you that are going to be in Temple next week, this is good practice. And you can see that she starts to sway a whole lot more. Okay, thank you. And you 
can go back to your chair. Okay. So we can see that our vision plays such a major role in our balance. It's probably one of the biggest things for our balance. Um, we see things. For those of you that have ever experienced vertigo or dizziness, basically what's happening, your eyes are telling us that our body's in alignment one way, and our inner ear is telling us that our head's the other way. So obviously, as a physical therapist, um, we can't do anything to correct your vision or correct your eyes. But, who here's vision's worse today than it was five years ago? I don't buy this. Um, to get our eyes checked regularly, and maybe we need a stronger prescription, um, especially if we feel like balance is becoming more of an issue. How many people here have a nightlight in between their bed and the bathroom? Does anybody not have one? A few of you. Now think about it. Sometimes when you get out of bed too quick, do you get dizzy? In the morning, do you sit at the side of the bed for a few seconds, count to 60, whatever it is, wait for the dizziness to go away? In the middle of the night, all of a sudden it's dark. Our vision is doing very little. But if we have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, usually people aren't sitting and counting at the side of the bed. Because, you know, when you got to go, you got to go. Um, if there's not a night light in between our bed and the bathroom in the middle of the night, vision plays such a major role. So try to walk your barefoot or you're fumbling for your slippers. You have some type of rug, some type of carpet in between your bed and the bathroom. You can think about how hard it would be to try to get from one spot to the other. First of all, if it's dark, and second of all, if we're dizzy. Um, so a nightlight is such an easy thing to try to make our eyes better. To have switches in different spots. Sometimes we will have people that will paint things different colors because our depth perception goes. So let's say if I had to walk up the step right here, well let's say maybe we'll make the floor one color, the step another color. That's why very often steps are different colors because it's a way of being able to perceive where it is in space. So vision is very, very important. Anybody have any questions about the vision with balance? <clears throat> Good. So the second part of balance is our inner ear. Our inner ear is our vestibular system. Everybody's heard of it. Um, but what it does, it helps control our balance. We basically have three canals in there. One goes up, one goes sideways, and one goes down. And fluid goes in there, and depending on the position of our head, that tells our body where we are. So, for those of you that get dizzy, who here gets dizzy daily? Some of you. And the dizziness that comes daily when we're dizzy, it throws up our balance. Um, everyone's been on a cruise at some point, or been on an airplane at some point. You get lightheaded, you get dizzy, you get motion sickness. And what do you think that does to our balance? Throws it off. So believe it or not, there are ways to train the inner ear. Um, there are some exercises that you can do. So who wants to be my next volunteer? Anybody? All right, Vicky, come on up. All right. You're going to look straight ahead for me. You're going to put your feet together. Just take a little step forward so you're not leaning back. So the reason why I always bring people to position with the feet together if you think about a tripod, do you think a tripod is more stable with the feet apart or the feet closer together? Oh, exactly. So I always tell people to go with the feet closer together because it gives a better idea of what's going on balance-wise. Get those toes touching too. All right. All the way together. Make your toes kiss. Perfect. All right. You look straight ahead for me. First, you're going to keep your eyes open. And what you're going to do for me is you're going to turn your head from side to side. And what you guys are going to do, I want you to watch Vicky's body as she goes. And if you, from here, I see her feet, and I see the feet muscles are contracting. She feels toe muscles working right now she never even knew she had. But what happens when we do this is we get a little bit more of a sway. So by doing something like this, this is a way of training our vestibular system. If this is too hard, a way to make it easier, now you can turn your feet a little bit further apart. So again, your feet a little further apart. And same thing, you go head side to side. And she's going to sway less in this position. But this is a way of retraining her inner ear to be ready for whatever may strike that may make us dizzy or may make us lose our balance. If that's too easy, 
Then what we're going to do is bring your feet back together for me. Now, if this was too easy going head side to side with our feet together, what do you think the next way to make it harder would be? Close your eyes. So we're going to combine them. So now she's wearing sunglasses so she can cheat and we'll have no clue whether she's doing it. All right, so close your eyes and you turn your head side to side. And you can see that she's swaying a lot more. Yeah. So even though she's swaying, our body being challenged is the way that it gets stronger. Thanks, Vicky. You can have a seat. Yay, Vicky. So our body being challenged is how it gets stronger. For those of you that are weightlifters, if we lift a one-pound dumbbell every day, do you think we're ever going to get stronger? Or do you think we're going to get stronger if we make it one pound to two pounds to five pounds to ten pounds? Now, everybody here lives in a house or a home or a room, something. So the greatest way to do these types of things is everybody has a corner. But if we stand in the corner of a room, hopefully there's not an American flag block anywhere in the corner, but if everyone was to stand in a corner and go through these positions, even if we were to lose our balance, what's the worst thing that can happen? We get caught by the wall on one side, we get caught by the wall on the other side. And if this is still unstable, then sometimes we'll tell people to put a chair in front of them. This way, even if they were sway forward, they would have the chair in front of them. So it's very simple to do, and there's ways of making things easier, and there's ways of making things harder. Uh, let's say if for Vicky it was still easy standing here, eyes closed, if it's still easy, how can we make it harder? Anyone have any ideas? One foot. One foot would uh, be a lot harder. Um, or even standing on an uneven surface. So like in the office, what we'll do is we have different foam pads that we'll have somebody stand on. Maybe we'll have them stand on a foam pad, maybe we'll throw a ball to them, have to reach and catch a ball. At home, if you have like a shaggy carpet, wearing the shoes versus wearing no shoes, wearing socks versus wearing no socks, standing on a pillow. There's many different ways that we could do this to try to challenge the body. And once the body's challenged, then we're becoming more efficient. Um, a lot of people think that balance and falls all comes with the aging process. It doesn't have to. Uh, just because we're getting older doesn't mean that we have to become less efficient. Um, you know, we, we see a lot of people that have different conditions, whether it be an MS or something that's more progressive, but our goals are never maintenance. Our goal is always to get somebody to feel better. There's always something out there that we can do to make ourselves feel more stable on our feet. So that's our inner ear. But like you said, standing on one foot. Does anyone here have a hip replacement? Okay, but you guys don't do this. But to stand one foot in front of the other, like a sobriety test. I wondered why that was so hard. Because when we're doing this, think about it. Here we have a very narrow base of support, but our feet are still somewhat shoulders width apart. By doing this, it gets harder because now all of a sudden you've really narrowed your base of support. The hip. hip replacement shouldn't do this because assuming your precautions are still on, crossing your legs is a no-go, if you remember. Did they tell you that? Oh, it's 15 years. Okay, so check with your doctor before you start doing this, all right? But um, standing one foot in front of the other is a great way. Does anybody here see the neurologist? And for those of you who see the neurologist, they may, when you see them, check your balance, have you walk one foot in front of the other. And you guys think, what, are you checking to see if I'm drunk or not? Um, but by doing something like this even, if you have a nice long hallway, you're working your balance. Basically, you have a very narrow base of support. Same thing, you can play around, eyes open, eyes closed, even surface, uneven surface, boom. Um, for those of you that come to the Y, we have these long, flat, narrow hallways in the Y, so it's a great place to try all this stuff. You may trip into over a couple of kids here and there, but... Um, it's a nice, long, flat hallway. The mall. There's so many nice places. Um, the holidays are coming up. They'll be here before you know it. Everybody's going to be in the mall buying presents for the kids, grandkids. Think about walking and, and shopping. Um, you know, oh, look what's over there. Look what's over there. Look what's over there. And for a lot of our patients, when we have them walk and turn their head from side to side, all of a sudden they're veering like crazy. And granted, no one's asking you to do this on a regular basis, but you're walking, you're talking, you're looking at the person next to you. Some of you may slow up. Some of you may even not even notice that you stop when you talk to somebody. So another idea of what you do in the house to try to make something like this easier, take um, a deck of playing cards and put them up on the wall. 
like different, so you have to walk, turn your head, okay, I, I see a six of spades, I see a queen of hearts, I see a jack of diamonds. By doing that, it's another way of making your body a little bit more efficient. What we do where we are in the Y is everything's a different color until we get to one stretch and everything's blue, so it gets easy at that point. But uh, walk, turn your head, tell me what color you see. I see green, I see blue, I see red. We're keeping our vision involved, we're keeping our inner ear involved. <coughs> So these are some tricks that can help maintain our balance and improve our balance for our vision and our inner ear. Questions? Uh, is it because I have hip replacement that it's hard to do that? That's one reason it's hard. Um, another reason is that it's a, it's a difficult position for a lot of people. Um, it's a very difficult position because your base of support is very <coughs> narrow. Some people may notice that it's easier with one foot in front of the other than the other to switch it. But if it's hard, we can modify it. So if this is easier, take a step forward. It doesn't have to be directly in front. So to even start like this, sometimes what we'll have our patients do is we'll have to stand one foot on the floor, one foot on, foot on a step. Even holding something like this. Who here has difficulty going up and down the stairs? Is it more because of pain or is it because of lack of balance? combination of the two. So even just holding this position. You know, a lot of you guys may be holding on two railings if you have them do one step at a time. But to even hold yourself in a position where we have if we have a railing, to hold on with one foot on the step. Okay, let's practice. Now I'm gonna lift my arm a little bit, I'm gonna hold it. So this is very similar to the position of standing one foot in front of the other, but it's functional. It's functional because we have one foot in front of the other. You okay?
there is a way of exercising that area where it will not increase your pain. Notice I said it won't make your pain go away, but it won't. If I have an 8 out of 10 pain in my shoulder right now, and it's constant, and I'm doing pain exercise, and that pain is still at that same 8 out of 10, most likely you are not going to do any increased damage. If your pain is going to a 10 out of 10, different story. So exercise becomes so important. If we have pain in our right leg, and we're walking off, we're not putting any weight through our right leg, what do you think is going to happen to our right leg? Atrophy. It's going to atrophy. It's going to become weaker. But at the same time, we're afraid to exercise because we're afraid that it's going to hurt. So what happens as a result? It's going to get worse. It becomes worse. It becomes more atrophy. So now all of a sudden, your painful right leg went from a painful right leg, so now all of a sudden you have a very painful, very weak right leg. So we still want that stability in there. We still need that strength in there. So there are ways to get yourself stronger. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that physical therapy is the answer for everything. Everyone here does have their medical doctor. If you're having pain, pain is not normal. No matter how much people think it's pain, and I have a couple of people that are so happy because they have pain. Because they say if they had no pain, they would think they were dead. But, um, Pain is not normal. Pain is our way of our body telling us that something's not right. So everybody here has their physician, their orthopedic, their physical therapist, their massage therapist. Everyone here has somebody that they trust. Go to that person and see what's going on. What, and it's not so much what's causing the pain. A lot of our patients, they always want to know what's going on. But what's going on is important. But the second part, when you see your doctor because there's an issue, Besides what's going on, what's the second most important question to ask? What can you do about it? And, you know, so many times we we'll ask our patients, how did it go with the doctor? Oh, it was awful. He said that I had rheumatoid arthritis. All right, so what do you recommend? Actually, you know, we just talked about that and I left. When you see a doctor, I know a lot of the times people feel like they're rushed. You know, it's like you're being sent to the principal's office. You have uh, a minute and a half to state your case and that's that. Write down your questions on a piece of paper. Does anyone here do that already? They write the questions down? Good. Because you know everybody does it. Oh, I, I forgot to ask him this, I forgot to ask him that. It'll take you a couple of minutes to write down these questions. You sit down and say, listen, doctor, I have these questions. I want to. And I have patients that do it. I have patients that scribble it down and they try to make it out. It's like, oh, I forgot what I wrote down. I know I had a question for you. It is such a good thing to do. I mean, you know, nowadays, where 30 years ago you would see your doctor, your doctor would say, take this pill and that would be that. Nowadays you go to your doctor, your doctor says, well, these are your choices. We can do either A or B or C or D. And it's confusing because they're the ones that are educated. We're the ones that are educated coming up with a course of action for you. But somewhere along the line, instead of it being, um, being told what to do, it becomes more of a discussion. Which we like because rather than give somebody a cortisone injection or give somebody surgery, give them the option of would you like to try physical therapy, would you like to try aquatic therapy, would you like to try um, these injections before we rush into doing surgery. And we like that. But take your time. Don't feel rushed when you go in there. Because once you get that pain controlled, and there is a way to control it, believe me, there is then you can worry about getting those muscles stronger to help with their balance and help prevent any falls. Uh, if we have a bumped right knee and we fall on our left knee, that's not going to be good for anybody. But at the same time, for those of you that have had more pain on one side at any given point, I'm sure at some point your other leg started to hurt because you're compensating on it. So that's why it's very good to get both legs strong. So it's okay to use heat and to use ice and to take a pill, um, but Exercise can play a role. Um, all right, let's get everybody to stand up again. Now, for those of you that do not feel comfortable doing this next one, uh, please don't do it. What we're going to do next, what I'm going to ask everyone to do, for those of you that have a chair in front of you, hold on to it. For you guys in the front, please don't do this if you don't feel okay to do it. Uh, but what we're going to try to do without holding on is stand on one leg like a flamingo. Don't do it yet, because I want to time everybody. Let me go back to my timer. Now basically, I'm going to do, I'm going to count out loud, and you just, uh, whatever number I say, you'll just remember at what number you had to stop. 
Let's stand on our right leg first. The left leg's going to be the one in the air. All right, everyone get ready. Let me come up here so I can see all my beautiful flamingos. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And relax. Okay, who here was able to hold it for ten seconds? Without holding on, who's here? Without holding on, who's able to do it for 10 seconds? You guys may sit. By 10 second people may sit. I do that. All right. 10 seconds is the norm. And everyone else can sit down. We'll give the other leg a rest. Uh, but 10 seconds is the norm. So, without holding on, 10 seconds is the norm. Think about when we walk. Everybody watch me walk and tell me what they say. Walking very slow, but what am I doing every time I bring one leg forward? But I'm also standing on how many legs every time we walk? So when we walk, we're on two legs, very short period of the time. So if you think about walking, we're on one leg. Now two feet are down. This is very similar to this position. Now you see why this position becomes important. So we're down. All of a sudden, this is an unsteady position. And now I keep going and I go this way. That's why people that have very poor balance, you see a lot of them are down like this, and they're going like this because basically they're constantly falling forward. So, we don't want that to happen because if we're constantly falling forward, well, eventually we'll keep going and we'll fall forward. That's why a lot of the people that you see with this have a walker. Um, that's why sometimes you see people shuffle because they're trying to feel the ground underneath their feet. Who here has lumbar stenosis? Lumbar stenosis. All right. Well, for those of you that don't know, stenosis is basically a fancy word for arthritis in the spine. Who here has arthritis in their back? All right. So what happens over time, our spinal cord sits in a tube like this. And that tube gets more and more narrow. So what happens, it pushes on our low back and the nerves. Those nerves are the ones that control our legs. It's one of the reasons why we get weaker in our legs as we get older. Diabetes? Okay, a few of you. Diabetes, what happens is neuropathy. Same thing can happen with spinal stenosis. Neuropathy. For those of you that don't know what neuropathy is, if this is my foot, I do this, it's a decreased sensation. So, for those of you that don't have neuropathy, every time we step down, we feel the ground underneath our foot. It tells us exactly where we are. For those of you that do have neuropathy, you're probably feeling the ground a little bit less efficiently as you used to be. So what happens, people start to shuffle. When we shuffle, this takes so much energy to do this everywhere, we're going to be exhausted by the time you're done doing this. So to work on our walking, to remember that heels first is so helpful. But what happens if we're doing this, or if we're doing this, all of our muscles are going to get tighter. Just like anything else, if I was to hold my arm like this forever, it would become very hard to go down this. Has anybody here ever had a cast on for anything, a cast or a brace? And once it comes off, what happens to that, that limb? It's stiff. It doesn't want to move. For those of you who have ever had shoulder surgery and you've been, dis you've been disabled or you've been down here for a while, then all of a sudden you go to therapy and you think we're nuts because we're the first one to move your arm up. Um, your body gets used to it. So we... Nothing in life is calling us back. Nothing in life is pulling us back. The phone's ringing, we go forward. The car's in front of us, we go forward. It's the sale at the store, we go forward. So what happens? Everything is forward. So what becomes the other big part of balance? Our posture. posture. All right. So our posture is so important. As I say, whenever I say that, I always say that it just themselves in the chat. All right, everybody go back to the slouch yourselves. Pretend that I never said the posture word. All right, I want everybody to turn their head to the right as far as they could. And I want everyone to pick a spot on the wall, on their neighbor's head. Everybody just pick a spot with their eyes. All right, everyone's going to look straight ahead again. Now I want everybody to sit up nice and tall, shoulders back, tummy as tight as I see everybody go. Now turn your head to the right as far as you could again. And everybody's head should be going more than it was. So our posture is such a big thing. Homework assignments. First one. 
When you get in your car to drive home, adjust your mirrors. Sit up nice and tall. So tomorrow morning when you're driving to the library or to the Y, and you're wondering, why can't I see the cars? Don't adjust the mirror. Adjust yourselves. That's such an easy thing to do. Because I, I do it too. Hey, you know, I, it's very hard to always practice what you preach. Yesterday I worked from 7.30 in the morning. I didn't get home to 9 o'clock at night. And uh, driving home, I can't see anything. And I realized, oh, it's because here we go. So when you sit in there at a red light, pull your shoulders back, sit up tall. Um, when you're watching TV, keep your shoulders back, sit up tall. When you're doing anything, try to watch your posture, and you'll see. Think about if you're walking and talking to one of your friends. Well, there's the difference between being able to turn your head this far versus being able to turn your head this far. It helps so much. The better your range of motion is in your neck, the better it will help with their posture, the better it will help with their walking. Because their head's leading the way, your body's following. So, it's a very, very good trick to help with their balance. Posture. You know what the nice thing is? Nothing that I've told anybody here yet. How much is this going to cost you? Nothing. You got enough co-pays, deductibles, Medicare this, Medicare that. You have enough of it. So far I've told you everything that's going to cost you nothing. It's just a matter of remembering to do it, but uh, that's the story with everything else. Uh, anyone have any questions yet? So far so good? All right, so the next part, yeah. The Bible is is that something that improves the practice? Yes. It does. Now the goal is improvement. Set goals for yourself. So if you're practicing standing on one leg, please do this in front of a countertop because I don't want to get a phone call that anybody took a tumble. Okay? Uh, could be good for business, but still we don't want anyone to take a tumble. Um, time yourself. I went from doing from two seconds to three seconds. Set goals for yourself. And that's the easiest way to show progress. Yeah? By doing that in the water, walking the tightrope and standing on one foot, I think it's helped a lot. Well, the nice thing about doing the exercises in the water, I know those of you that come to the Y have access to a pool. For those of you that don't have, don't go to the Y, uh, I don't know if there are any community pools that are still open, if there are any indoor pools. Um, but there is a benefit of doing this balanced stuff in the water. Because when you're in the water, what's the worst case scenario? You lose your balance, you get wet. Assuming you know how to swim. Um, plus you also have the, if there are other people in the water, there is going to be a little bit of a current. So to do balanced stuff in the water is very beneficial. And for those of you that have pain, and pain is a limiting factor, what do you think your pain level is if you're in the water to here and you're bearing 75 less weight throughout your legs? Much less. So for us, a lot of the physical therapy that we do is in the water, especially for people that have severe pain, where it's great because you're able to not only help with their balance and their walking, but you're able to get their pain less by getting them stronger using the water. So for those of you doing these postural exercises, and hopefully everybody will do it, the hot shower is a great trick because the warm water, some of you probably already do it, some of those of you that have a stiff neck in the morning, that hot shower is what gets you going. And to stand in there and to turn your head from one side to the other side while the water's hitting your neck. Great. Up and down, great. Stretch from side to side, great. For any reason you feel unsure whether you should be doing anything, and in these folders, we'll go over before, before we leave, but in these folders are some exercises. These exercises are very generic. If for any reason you think that you cannot do it, for any medical reason, please consult with your physician uh, before you do it. Um, but the exercises that are in here are simple, and I give you easy ones on purpose because if I give you hard ones, are you going to do it? Probably not. So I give you easy ones because everything is a progression. Something as simple as going up and down, down on your tippy toes. I think it's easier like this, or easier like this. Holding on. What's the next progression? I can close my eyes. I can turn my head from side to side as I do it. So these are all things that we could all combine together. Um, any other questions? Good. The last component that I'd like to talk about is shoe wear. As I scoop at everybody's feet. Don't think I'm uh, creepy by checking these things. Um, shoe wear is very important towards the balance. Let's see, where are my flip floppers? Um, I see one pair. I don't want to make you the only one sticking out. All right. Um, shoe wear is very important because shoe wear, when we walk, our balance, our feet are a balance. You feel it. You know, when you walk, if you're stepping on something that's sturdy, even though your eyes are tired.
telling you is unsturdy, even though your inner ear is saying, oh, it's our feet. So if we're wearing a good sturdy sneaker, we're going to be a lot better off. Um, Keds. Anybody here wearing Keds? What? Is you, uh, what? You're wearing Keds? Let's see what you got on. All right, New Balance. Good. So no one's wearing Keds. Usually I pick on the people wearing Keds. Um, so basically, to be a good lightweight sneaker is very beneficial. Now I know, obviously, if you're going to uh, if you're going to your grandson's bar mitzvah, you don't want to be wearing a pair of Adidas down here. Um, but you know, it's very easy to bring a pair of sneakers with you. You know, and whenever uh, I always wear sneakers to work, and whenever I do a lecture, I always wear shoes. And whenever I wear shoes, there's always someone in the audience. But you're wearing shoes, so today I decided to wear sneakers. Um, Sneakers, a running sneaker, not a cross training sneaker, not a high top. A running sneaker is the most supportive. If you think about runners, they have to be able to run on a flat surface, an uneven surface, a wet surface, a dry surface, a muddy surface. They have traction, they're lightweight, they have an arch, and they give you support. A good running sneaker is wonderful. For you ladies, I swear to God, I don't have any stock in Costco. But they have these awesome Adidas running sneakers in Costco for like 35 bucks. They're actually nice looking. I hate it that they don't have the men's. These actually, I got from BJ's, I think for $35, $40. Adidas running sneaker. Uh, New Balance is good. Uh, Soconi are good. Um, I mean, they're all good in their own way. But when you buy a sneaker, you should make sure it's a running sneaker. And it's lightweight, where some sneakers are very heavy. And if you think about it, our right leg hurts, and we're dragging our feet, and now all of a sudden we're wearing a big, uh, is it what we're called, the clock hopper? Is that what that always called them? Um, it's going to make it a lot harder to lift that leg if that leg all of a sudden has an extra pound on it. So a good lightweight sneaker. That doesn't mean you can never wear a flip-flop, but be prepared. If you know that you have to go to a uh, barbecue on the sand at the beach, you probably are going to want to wear a flip-flop. But if the sand is so unsteady to begin with, do you think we're safer in a flip-flop or safer in a, a good supportive sneaker? Yeah. There you go. Um, I'll be honest, I hate bringing my sneakers to the beach. You get sand in your shoes, who wants that? But at the same time, it doesn't mean you can't bring a pair of flip-flops with you, but just be prepared. You know, to have a pair of sneakers with you. For the women, because I know it's always more women in shoes than men in shoes. Um, when you go to a wedding or when you go to a function, do you ever bring, bring a pair, a change of shoes with you? Not sneakers. But do you bring a second pair with you to change into at the end of the night? Not okay, not usually. And you know, my wife finally listens to me, and she does it because I mean, high heels are, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they're great for business, but they're bad for uh, they're bad for society. Um, granted, they're fashionable. But, um, you know, our feet, they, they're the first thing to strike the ground, so if we're not in something with good support. Um, when I pick out a sneaker, what I like to do is the twist test. So if you take your sneaker, and you'll feel right away if it's light or not, but when you're buying sneakers, if you try to twist it, there's going to be a little bit of movement in the front, but right here with the arches, you want very little movement. And this thing barely moves, and this sneaker is so lightweight. And if it didn't smell bad, I'd let you hold it. <laughs> um, but um, the sneakers are so important because shoe wear really will keep you stable. And sneakers are something that will last you a while. And as much as people don't think they're fashionable, they come in pretty colors nowadays. So. Questions? You said you should not wear flip flops at all, or that's basically what you're saying. Ideally, yes. Granted, if you're walking from the locker room to the pool. You know, I know that the men's locker room at the Y, I mean, I almost killed myself regularly, and I'm in the pool almost daily, and I should learn my lesson to wear sneakers in there instead of flip-flops. Flip-flops do not have any traction on the bottom. So if you think about being in a wet area wearing flip-flops, I mean, it's very dangerous. 
uh, but at the same time, who wants to put on sneakers wet? So to have sneakers, have a towel, dry your feet, ideally flip-flops, Crocs, those are like a PT's nightmare. Yeah. How do you feel about these inserts of shoes and sneakers? Orthotics. Orthotics are good. What happens, um, it happens more to women than men, but um, most people, as we get older, don't become bow-legged. They become more knock-kneed. And that happens because gravity, as much as we love it, because it keeps us from floating up to the ceiling, it brings everything down. So it brings us this way. As this happens, our feet become more flat. So that's why we talk about a sneaker with a good arch support. Now, if our arches are severely collapsed, then an orthotic could be something that could be beneficial, because what it'll do, it'll bring our feet from being super flat to giving us a little bit more stability and a little bit more sturdiness. And that will help with any knee pain, hip pain, and sometimes back pain. Where we are, I've had a number of patients where severe back pain all of a sudden, you know, especially salesmen that are on the feet all day long, um, they have to wear shoes, but if you put an uh, arch support in a good shoe, you can turn it all of a sudden into like a sneaker. So yeah, um, again, I'm going to say Costco because that's what I talk about. But Costco, they actually have these inserts right now that I think they're cuttable and they come in different sizes. So uh, the nice thing is if they don't work, they take everything back. So um, to start getting into customized orthotics, it, it's costly and there's not always a guarantee that it's going to work. Um, so I would suggest if anybody thinks orthotics may help them out, go for a Dr. Scholl's or go for the whatever one you see that where you could cut it. I know that some Walgreens now, they have these stations where you stand on them and they make like some kind of prefabricated thing. Um, if your insurance isn't covering an orthotic, uh, don't go seeking one out right away because it could cost you five, six hundred dollars. And what you're going to do is you're going to do this. You're going to say, are you kidding me? Five hundred dollars for this? That's what you're going to do. But hey, for some people the custom ones work very well. I had the heels first and they did help. Good. Good. And they can be helpful. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. I know it's very good to ex to walk or exercise in the pool and if you, it's because it, the water holds 75 or 90 percent of your weight. But at the same time, I have arthritis and then people say, well, and if it's raining, it's going to hurt, you know, it hurt, it, it, the moisture in the air is going to make the arthritis hurt, but yet going in the Well, what happens is two different things. There is the humidity, yeah. and every joint in our body has what they call a Golgi tendon organ, uh, named after Mr. Golgi, I'm assuming. Um, but what these things do, they change, they sense changes in atmospheric pressure, and that's why on certain days we sense more pain. So even though it's the humidity that makes us achy, yeah. it's the increase in atmospheric pressure that's causing the pain. Oh. So being in the water, it's being in the water, if we're in the water to our, our hips, we're putting 50% less weight through our body. So if we weigh 100 pounds, we're only feeling 50 pounds through our body. If we're to our shoulders, we're about 75% less. And if we're in a pool where there's deep water, and if you were to hang in the noodle, you'd be completely non-weight bearing. Um, I don't know if anyone here has ever been on a uh, supported treadmill. If anyone here has had a stroke where they were on a supported treadmill. Um, Basically, it's doing the same thing, where it's holding all your body weight, but it's waiting to get your legs moving. So, there are being in a pool with deep water gives you benefits that you can play around with your weight bearing. Um, I had a woman in the pool this morning who uh, is in a wheelchair. She has not walked now in three years, and all of a sudden, being in the pool, she's like a little missing independent. You know, me, it's the first time in the pool. I, you, know, you think I got to be right on top of this person? second day in a row, a different person, get away from me, let me do my own thing. So, um, the water gives people independence, and it helps lessen pain. So if it's not for you guys, if it's for somebody that you know that's wheelchair bound or very immobile, getting in a pool is very beneficial. You know, if they're safe enough to do an aqua aerobic class or whatever else it may be, that's great. If it has to be something a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, then uh, you know, there are physical therapy places out there that do do the aquatic therapy and help the body keep going. So, um, pool is a great thing, especially for pain. Any other questions? All right, so if everyone
everyone takes out these folders that they have in front of them. I'm just going right briefly with you. So on this, um, not the little cartoon, but the next page, this is basically a checklist that you guys can go over at some point. Just go over everything in there. There are some things in there that are simple. There are some things in there that you say, how come I never thought about that? But basically what it is, a checklist of ways to make the house safe. Um, from the kitchen, to the outside, to the inside, to the bathroom. There are many ways in here to make things safe. And it, you'll see as you go through it, a lot of it is geared towards our legs and a lot of it's geared towards our vision. Our inner ear component of balance, you can see a lot of that's not been involved because that's more internal. But the vision part becomes very big with a lot of the things in the house that we can do. Whether it be uh, night lights, um, whether it be putting different colored things in different places so you can see where you're going. Clutter is such a big thing. Uh, where I worked with a woman and every time I went, she had balance issues, I was working with her in her house. Every time I went there, I'll never forget, she had the same box of espania dishes from Macy's. And she had these balance issues. And I would come in and say, listen, you're falling left and right. Move these boxes. And I eventually moved them against her will, but you know, the clutter is such a big thing. Extension cords, the hose outside, uh, your lawn not being mowed if we have to walk across the lawn. If we're looking outside and we see the sprinklers we're just on, we want to go get the newspaper. Maybe our slippers aren't the best idea. Maybe we should get ourselves into a sneaker. Things like that. If we go to the second page, um, these are basically just normal. So if you guys get together and you're at a cocktail party or, uh, or you're with friends and you just want to play around, play a game, who's got the worst balance in the room? These are basically just the norms for that. Um, where, where it says standing on one leg, you can see the ages, you can see how, what age should be able to do what second. Um, where it says chair stand test, that's basically how many times you can go from a sitting position to a standing position in 30 seconds. So if you wanted to do that with anybody, on the second, on the next page, it says fall preventative exercises. The exercise at the very top is standing one leg in front of the other. You see it says stand in the corner of a room because we want to be able to hold yourself stable. Once again, if you have had any hip replacements and you're not sure whether you should be crossing your legs, you may want to consult with your doctor before doing that. Um, the one underneath is standing on one leg, but it also says standing in front of a counter or the corner of a room because the idea is even though we want to work on our balance, we want to not fall. So those are ways of doing that. If we go to the next page where it says, uh, also says fall preventative exercises. Basically there are three exercises that will help get our body stronger. The first one is holding on to a counter, kicking the leg forward. The second one is holding on to a counter, doing a little bit of a squat backwards. When I say squat backwards, it's backwards, not knees over toes like people like to do. It's like there was a chair behind us and we were going to touch our tushy to the chair. The third one is going up and down on our tippy toes. Like as I was saying before, everything could be a progression. If this is easy, the next one that there would be, okay, now we do it without holding on. And you're going to see it's going to become harder. Still easy, I can close my eyes and do it. Same thing with tippy toes, holding on. Not holding on. Eyes closed. Maybe I'll make my feet go together. So there are different ways that we could make everything a progression. And the last page in here is just some information on balance and uh, a little bit about why balance becomes off. But uh, the one thing that's not in here that I wish I would to put in there is uh, for our inner ear, head movements. That is the best way to retrain our inner ear to make it more efficient with our balance. So whether you were standing and we turn your head from side to side or up and down, just to uh, incorporate something like that into our diet, and that will make a difference. Yeah. They have those loose crystals. Is that possible to do? Yeah, well, those loose crystals. If somebody has like a, a vertigo, um, these are very similar exercises that you would go to if you seek the vertigo them, treatment. Do them all the time. Well, you guys are all here today, I'm assuming, because everyone in here wants to keep themselves stable on their feet. If we don't have any issues and if we feel like our balance is fine and we don't have a need to do this stuff, then there's no need to flare anything up. Okay. But if we feel the need to get our balance better and to keep ourselves more stable, that becomes a different story. Any other questions? Does everybody remember what their homework is?
minutes for later? Everyone driving home now? All right, what are we going to do when we get in our car to drive home? Show me. All right. Posture and rear view mirror. All right. This is the pop quiz next week, so I'm going to come and I'm going to check everybody's car and make sure that the, uh, the mirrors are where they need to be. Thank you. You're welcome.